present memory dysfunction is one of the main disabilities, psychological disabilities within dementia, so that the person loses their way along commonly trod pathways and forgets what it is that they have just done. Have they left the pot on the stove? Have they locked the door? Have they left the tap running? So in this way, activities of daily living are affected. Safety is affected and what happens is that the person comes to the point that they cannot live independently on their own. They can't manage activities of daily living. And then at that point, they need to go into care. Unless they're living with a person that can help and assist, but even then, there's still a point with that where it becomes unmanageable and you don't want the support person, you know, worn down to a frazzle because they need to have quality of life as well. And also when the person goes into care, they need to have some resilience there to be able to help that person with quality of life. Now, in terms of present memory dysfunction in a dementia unit, of course, that's catered to because there's cares, so showering and dressing, bed making, etc. is done, laundry's done, cleaning's done, and of course meals are cooked and served. So the person doesn't need a present memory to be able to live life well in a dementia unit because all of that's done for them. But still, there's a lot that needs to be done on top of that to support the person's quality of life. And as a relative, if you have um, kept some resilience, some of your own strength through the process and are able to help with taking the person on good outings, trips, walks, etc., that helps an enormous amount in terms of aiding their quality of life. Now, in terms of present memory dysfunction, what happens is that sometimes people get really frustrated with dementia residents or people with dementia that don't remember. You explain and again and again you explain and still they don't remember. And it can become quite wearing if your tolerance is low, if you're exhausted, if you're at a low ebb, and you haven't got that resilience or strength to be able to cope with it. So what's needed really is you need to get around this present memory problem in a way that doesn't frustrate you and also doesn't frustrate the dementia resident. So when you know that the present memory is a dysfunction in dementia, but past memory is often there and present moment functioning is there, so you can discuss what the person's seeing before their very eyes, and there's lots to discuss in a dementia unit, who's doing what, what staff are coming on, when the doctor's visiting, who's the carer, what's on TV, what activities are going on, whatever's happening before the very eyes of the person that they can see in the present moment, you can discuss with them. But not to go into present memory, you know, not to ask them what they had for lunch, what did they do this morning, you know, what have they been up to lately? None of that, because with present memory dysfunction and loss, they won't remember. It's frustrating, and of course the person with dementia loses their confidence. They think, oh, I can't think. I don't know what I've just done. How am I going to manage? Whereas if you just discuss the present moment and what's happening in front of the person, the activities in the here and now, plenty to talk about in the here and now. And if you want a bit of variety, you can go back to past memories, leap back to that. They'll remember that pretty much, school days and when you were first married and when the children were young and the holidays you had and bring in the scrapbook for that. So it's just diverting around the present memory problem so that you can still communicate. Neither party gets frustrated and things can tick along because it's important that a positive quality of life is sustained for both the person in the dementia unit and the relative visiting. Visits need to be enjoyable and to make them enjoyable there needs to be variety and a little bit of effort put in to make them interesting and nice. For example, most retirement villages have lovely places, lovely gardens, lovely nooks and crannies, waterfalls, places to have a nice cup of coffee, meander along the corridors where all the lovely 
pictures of Africa and the Mediterranean Greek islands are, and you can discuss those and view those and enjoy all of that. And it makes for a much more interesting time than just sitting in the dementia unit, though interesting in itself. The person is there all day, 24 seven. They need variety. So if you can take them out and you know, you'll get to know the staff at the front desk of the retirement village when you walk around there, you know, um, commonly, then they get to know you and you get to know the other residents here and there in different places. And it becomes like an extended community. So that rather than just your isolated community for the person at the dementia unit, you're much more part of the retirement village when you can have walks and outings and get to know the scenery and the other people. So I've written about all this present memory dysfunction and dementia at length. These two books, in these two books, The Resident's Voice and The Resident's Rise, both from a dementia unit, both on Amazon and from my website, pietervalentine.com. Everything is in the description below. So thank you for your looks, comments, likes. Please pass on the links. Thank you so much for the support of this channel. Thank you.